It was the year of the queen. Here's to 2017. It is the year of Her Excellency. <laughs> Welcome to Kick-Ass Switch, putting the K in magic. I'm Joanna DeVoe and you are watching Mega Vlog number 13. Mega Vlog number 13. I think 13 is a lucky number. So it's the perfect way to begin the new year. Happy new year, my magical friends. And it is because so many of you said that you love the mega vlogs that I am continuing a month, continuing a month, continuing in a month. <laughs> I shall be continuing them in 2017. Try singing that song at the beginning. It's very difficult, I have to say. <laughs> have you seen La La Land? Have you seen La La Land? Oh my God, you have to see La La Land. You have to see La La Land is the best way to start the year or to end last year. I saw it at the end of last year with my mom and my Aunt Bonnie and I literally bawled my head off through the entire thing, which I'm not saying you will do because I think I did that because it was like a flashback to all my hopes and dreams that I haven't made happen yet. The hopes and dreams that took me from Bakersfield to Hollywood, broke my heart over and over and over again. Just about everything that Emma Stone's character went through in like the first half of the movie at least, I have been through and I knew all the places that they were filming in. Like, I was like, oh, I know that place. I know that place. I've been there. They shot in my neighborhood. They shot at Warner Brothers, which I worked there for two years. So I just, I don't know. I just bawled and bawled and bawled. <laughs> and then at the end, everybody was bawling. Um, so I went back. I loved it, by the way. I'm not saying it was a bad cry. It was a good cry. And I love... I'm always singing. I grew up with musicals. That's what my mom, my Aunt Bonnie, and my Day Day. My mom, my Day Day, who is my Uncle Dale, and my Aunt Bonnie, they were in a choir when they were kids, um, or a group. They were like a, a, the three of them formed a little group. Like they were the Hints children, and they would go around to churches and events and things and sing for people and harmonize. And we would sing around the table, like at Thanksgiving, instead of praying, we would sing our prayer and harmonize like praise god for whom all blessings flow and uh so i think i live in a musical basically <laughs> i'm like in my kitchen singing all the time and it's worse than ever but it also made me cry because it was really special seeing that movie with my mom and my aunt bonnie because of that and because like all the old tiny musicals back in the day my mom loved those so if they came on tv she'd be like ah! and we'd go watch them for the 10 millionth time like we watch the same ones over and over and over again if my family if someone goes it's snowing you know someone will go snow and then another person will go snow snow and then we'll all bust out in a song <laughs> um so that was really special and then i had to go back two days later with my friend Amber and see it again. Uh, it is, if you don't know, it is Emma Stone and uh, Ryan Gosling and it is a super sweet love story. A pure love story. There's no like sweaty bumping and grinding up against the wall. It's not that kind of Hollywood romance. It is like sweet, innocent, beautiful love kind of romance. It's very innocent that way, but it takes place in the modern day times, like in Los Angeles today, but it's written and filmed as an old timey musical, if that makes sense. And I am so in love with that movie. I've been trying to buy the shoes that Emma Stone was dancing in. They're these black and white uh, spectator Oxfords. And I know what brand they were, but they're sold out. The places I found them online, they don't have my size. They've like sold out of all the sizes besides the super tiny ones. And then the place here in LA that I, I think the um, costume designer actually bought them from is kind of a hike for me. Like it's gonna be two hours round trip, but I think I'm gonna make the trip. That's like a goal of mine in 2000. 
17 is to buy these shoes. <laughs> I did that for myself last year. I had a purse I really wanted and a wallet I really wanted. And then I challenged myself to manifest them, uh, to manifest extra money. And I played little like manifesting games with myself all through the year actually, but especially at the beginning of the year. So now I'm playing a little trick on myself to see how soon I can get the shoes and how easily I can get the shoes. And then once I have the shoes, you may never see me again because I'm just gonna be like twirling through the streets of LA and the world will be my musical. This is an odd way to start this, but this is how they all go because I don't really know what I'm gonna say. I just start blabbing. <laughs> I just start chatting. Um, but that seeing that movie right at the end of 2016 was fabulous because my heart was a little bit broken about um, the election results. The t-shirt, the t-shirt that I took off in the beginning of this video, I took it off because I look like a giant blue square. But I'm going to the grocery store after this and I'm gonna be as polarizing as I wanna be. I'm gonna be wearing my witch's star, my pinnacle, <laughs> and this. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's Hillary Clinton riding a unicorn as the queen of swords. There's a rainbow and there's crystals and she's riding in to save the day. And it makes me laugh. There's a rebel in me that, that likes to just bug people when something I love, I know bothers other people. There's a little piece of me that enjoys that. So I'm gonna walk around the grocery store in my Hillary Queen of Swords riding a unicorn t-shirt <laughs> uh, after I'm done talking to you. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Something about movies. Oh, I saw La La Land at the end of last year, which was great. That was a really uplifting, positive, beautiful way to end the year. And then on January 1st, the first day of 2017, I saw Doctor Strange. I actually devoted most of my podcast, the first podcast of the year, which aired this Tuesday. You can go back and listen to it. It's, it's up for you to listen to, um, to Doctor Strange. It's called Saturn, Doctor Strange, and The Privilege of Time. And the reason I'm mentioning these two movies right now and why I think it's so awesome that they sort of like escorted me from one year to the next is that they both represent like me to a T, like what I love. So La La Land is all about dreams and Kick-Ass Witch is all about dreams. Like I want so much to help you create the kick-ass life of your dreams. I want so much to inspire other people to like pick up their old, you know, broken hearted dreams and dust them off and give it another try. And, um, you know, I, I like, I just get a real kick out of when somebody writes to me and is like, thanks to you, I just started my website or thanks to you, I'm going back to school to become this or whatever. Like, I just feel like, yes. <laughs> and I think it's because of what I was saying when I was crying, when I was watching La La Land, I have like this big dream in my heart to make movies, to be a part of movies, and having that unfulfilled, and just, it's just like this Hollywood-shaped hole in my heart that I don't know if I'll ever fill, but it's also, I think, what drives me to want to help other people, and um, I do have a little plan in the works. It's gonna take some time. It's a little, it's a long plan. It's very far-sighted, and I'll share it with you one day. So. Um, hopefully at some point I can spend most of my time writing and perhaps even getting to get back involved in the movie making process at some point. But I always want to do Kick-Ass Witch, so I need to really devote myself to this um, long enough to create a good foundation and to make sure I have a steady income to pay my bills and that it's reliable. and. Uh, if I do get to pursue those dreams, like I wanna take you with me too and be like, okay, like I, my whole mission for these whatever five or six years was to help you create the kick-ass life of your dreams and now watch me go. I'm, I'm off to create my kick-ass life of my dreams and come with me and I just think that would be so, I thought I would be doing that much earlier. That was part of the original business plan. Um, but I greatly underestimated what it takes to build 
what I'm trying to build here. So that's okay. The journey is the creation. <laughs> it's not a destination. So I'm just along for the ride. So La La Land for me was so much about the dream, living the dream, um, the heartbreak of pursuing a dream, the ecstatic joy of achieving a dream, all of that. And then Doctor Strange is about magic. It's about quantum physics and how your body has the ability to heal itself, that there's an innate intelligence that when you get out of your own way, your body can heal itself. And they didn't really explore that as much in the beginning, like they promised that in a way, like they set up, if I have one critique of the movie, it would be that. Um, although they may explore this more, uh, I think there's sequels coming down the road, but um, it starts out really exploring this theme of quantum physics and mind over matter, getting out of your way, getting out of your mind, letting your body heal itself, channeling the forces of the energy for healing or of the universe for healing, stuff like that. Um, but the piece that really, really resonated with me and that I yammered on about in Tuesday's podcast was time, which I fully associate with Saturn, who I worked with so much last year, Saturn, Kronos, Father Time. And this theme they were very, very tight about. They set it up really well and they followed it through all the way, beginning to end, including lots of like imagery of watches and timepieces. And uh, it really explored the paradoxes of time. And I think there are multiple paradoxes of time, you know? It is both real and unreal. It is both fixed and infinite. <laughs> it is, I think, you know, in the new age community, it's often presented as like time is an illusion. It is a construct of the human mind. And it's like, well, that's true, but it's also true that it is part of the reality of this thing we call life. And working with Saturn really got me in touch with that. And, um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna repeat all of that because I already went there and this video will be like 10 hours long if I start going there but it was amazing it was so much fun getting to touch on these two like two themes of my own like what drives me magic and dreams and so I loved I could go see both again <laughs> that would be the third time for La La Land uh, but if you haven't seen Doctor Strange like See if it's still playing in your area. It came out November 4th, but if you love magic or quantum physics or superheroes, it's a superhero movie technically, uh, you'll probably love it. I thought it was awesome. It reminded me of The Matrix. And before I rattle on too much, I should say, if you didn't pick up from my little weird song at the beginning, that this is the theme for 2017, right here. Excellence, excellence, excellence. I loved working with, you can see behind me too. This was my project for the winter solstice module of the Psycho Spiritual Wheel of the Year. And you can see excellence across the top. That is my power word for this year. Uh, what was my point? Oh, I loved working with the queen in 2016 so much. Like I have queen stuff all over my room now. And it's an archetype that changed me. That like working with that archetype, I felt like it really taught me something over the course of the year and changed who I am. And that I'm still at the very, very, very beginning of understanding what it means to be a queen. So this summer I was kind of already having thoughts like that or last summer. And the word excellence came to me as the word that I would be working with this year. So I knew like six months before 2017 began that excellence would be my word of the year. And weird enough, I think I know what my word of the year is for 2018. I don't know why this is happening to me, <laughs> but I feel like these words pick me and then like I can't deny them. Like it's a kind of like spiritual guidance and I'm like, okay, let's just go there because I have been doing this for so many years that 
even when words, I feel like they pick me. I know that's a weird thing to say, but I don't feel like I'm picking the words. I don't go through a process of like, what would be a good word for me? It just like a word just grabs me and I'm like, really? Really? Surrender? A whole year of working with surrender? I did that <laughs> and I learned a lot, um, but it wasn't like the most exciting thing. So uh, I don't know why now they're like piling up on me early, but they are. My point is, after I was thinking about excellence and how that would be my word, it occurred to me that that was the perfect way to still keep working with the archetype of the queen, um, but choose a new power word because of, you know, her excellency. <laughs> so I'm working with the queen, her excellency. I'm working on being excellent. What does being excellent mean to me? I don't know. These words really teach you something as you work with them through the course of the year. So whatever excellence means to me now, I'm sure at the end of the year it will, if not mean something different, it will be much more layered than my understanding of it now. And that's part of the beauty of working with the power word. This is my date book as I have blinged it out. <laughs> I loved formation so much and, and lemonade and that whole thing and I wasn't ready to let that go. Let's see, I'll show you the opening of my date book too here. I've got like a bunch of um, quotes. This is one of my favorite little things from last year. The journey is the creation that I'm taking with me. Just some favorite quotes. Success begins with commitment of energy and knowledge of direction. And that to me is what this girl represents. This is very... I have um, two houses in my astrological chart that are ruled by Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is a sign that I don't really connect with much at all. <laughs> I dated someone who was a Sagittarius and the drummer in my band was a Sagittarius. And both of these men, like, I just, they confused me and I loved them both. Like, and I still do. I have great feelings for both of these people, <laughs> but there were things that I think are very Sagittarius about them that I was just like, I just don't relate. I just don't get it. But in working with my natal chart a lot last year, I, I got curious. It's like, well, I have two houses ruled by Sagittarius. Like, I feel like I should get to know that archetype better. So that is why she is here. I love the symbolism too, and because I'm such a goal-oriented person, I'm a very ambitious entrepreneur, a very focused dreamer, I like the imagery of like focusing on a dream and like, you know, pulling back the arrow and like shooting, being very focused that way. Focus is one of my core desired feelings this year. And then I pulled, have I shown you this? Uh, Before? Isn't that cool? Um, what is the guy's name? Danny Loff. Daniel Danny Loff? Hold on a second. I gotta get this right. <laughs> Alexander Danny Loff. 2012. This is his tarot deck. I ordered this. You have to email him, or you did back in the day, to get this. But this is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. I don't usually read with this deck. I keep it here on this little altar and sometimes I just pull a card for like specific random things. It's really just one of the most beautiful decks. If I pick, post a picture of it on uh, Facebook or Instagram, people are always like, what deck is that? Oh my God, it's beautiful. So I was sitting here meditating in the new year and I got this like little urge to like pick a card and when I do this, I literally mean that's the urge like I get these little physical like nudges when I'm meditating and so I like just reached out and grabbed my deck and shuffled it around to I guess pick a card of the year and this is the card I picked and it's the page of I wish the lighting was better sorry guys it's the page of wands and I thought well see it's better back here <laughs> it's the page of wands and I just thought Something about that went, went really well with this and uh, made a lot of sense to me. Action, wands. So that's what I'm working with. Fire energy, Sagittarius energy, excellence. And then this I wanted to show you as well. 
This is, I've already like marked it all to heck because it's kind of like a workbook. This is, I'm going to mispronounce her name because I've never heard it said out loud. It is B-E-N-E-B-E-L-L, Wen, W-E-N. Benabel Wen, Benabel Wen, Benabel Wen. She is, holy smokes, Foo Talismans is I think her book that people kept sharing like throughout the year. People kept recommending this book and it kept popping up and I was like, oh, that looks cool. I love anything Tao, Taoism, anything interests me. And uh, so it was like, it caught my attention. I was interested. And then sometime in December, Dawn Champagne of the Goddess Diaries was like, have you seen this agenda? It's the Metaphysical Planner by Benebel Wynn. Benebel Wynn. <laughs> I was like, oh no, that's cool, whatever. Sounds neat. And then I, I think she sent me a link and I was like, oh my God, this thing is amazing. So I already had my date book, my trusty date book. I get one of these every single year. But this was so neat and so affordable. It was only $25 before I, I had this printed out on uh, lulu.com. But for the digital version of it, it's only 25 bucks. And it's like super packed with your natal chart, every kind of correspondence you can think of, feng shui advice, and what I love about it is, um, all of that's really cool. Here, let me show you. You get to pick who your uh, guardian of the year is gonna be. And this, I had never heard of her before, the Lady of the Ninth Heaven, but she felt very Queen of Swords-ish to me, so I chose her, so that was included in my book. And then here you have the 13 principles of craft. So it's a lot of magic, but what I love is the nerdy planning. It really fits with my planning style of picking a couple goals for each part of your life and then the actions that you're gonna take to follow through. So you have that for the whole year and then you have that for quarterly, like so every 90 days or so. So it already like suited the way that I plan. So much planning. I have the Lunaria calendar, which I've already shot. Flip cam, flip cam footage. I found my flip camera. It is ancient. It is barely hanging on. It's so glitchy, but I found it. I lost this. And this is why I was thinking about not doing any more mega vlogs for you. But anyway, <laughs> I found it. So there will be mega vlogs. But um, so I have the Lunaria calendar, which is a calendar, instead of saying like January, February, March, it follows it starts at the beginning of the calendar year for all of us, kind of, but it follows the moon cycle. So the first page started on December 28th, which was the new moon, and then it goes to that moon cycle. So it's it's almost aligned with our, our uh, calendar, but not quite. So I have that, every little square on that has the astrology for the day. I have the metaphysical planner and I have my date book. And it's probably too much, but I'm loving all of it because I'm a nerd about this stuff. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you that I'm sure you probably own a copy of by now, Big Magic, I'm not promoting this book to you, although if you haven't read it, I don't know why not. Elizabeth Gilbert is definitely one of my personal sheroes, at least as a writer. I love her, her fiction is fantastic, her memoirs are fantastic, her non-fiction self-helpy stuff is fantastic, her Facebook page is fantastic, and her public speaking is fantastic. She is fantastic. So something I like to do now that I really got in the groove with last year is like planning little vacations or, or goals far away or paying for them way in advance as something to look forward to. And when I saw that she was coming to Big big Magic, when I saw that she was coming to Santa Barbara in May to give a speech about her book, Big Magic, I was like, done, <laughs> I bought two tickets. <laughs> so my friend Amber and I are going to drive to Santa Barbara, which is only like two hours from a house or so. And uh, we're gonna go see Elizabeth Gilbert. I have never seen her or heard her speak in person, so I already have something exciting and fun to look forward to that's happening this May, this spring. And then 
I, I finally settled on the birthday trip for Tanner and I this year. If you haven't been following me, my son and I were picking a different city, a different vacation for every year. We have our birthdays together at the end of September. Our birthdays are back to back. So this is something, we've only done it twice. We did Big Sur the first year, and then last year we did Portland, and this year we are doing Boston and Salem, Massachusetts. So if you live around Boston or Salem, Massachusetts, bug me, <laughs> bug me and we'll try to put together something. I don't know, like a dinner that we can all meet up at. I don't know, Sherry immediately pops into my head. I have not read your book yet, Sherry. It's The Prodigal Son, but it's on my short list of books to read early this year. Um, Sherry Bro Kreitner, for those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, you might know her as Lunar Wisdom. She's a writer and she wrote a book called The Prodigal Son and she lives somewhere near Salem, near-ish, I think. So I would love to meet up with her. And there's probably a bajillion other things to talk about, but I'll just save it for another time because <laughs> I've, I've run out of steam suddenly all of a sudden. I think I hear my son just came home. We're going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to put my Hillary t-shirt on and... Uh, I will tack on whatever footage I have that I've recorded on my flip cam here for you. And until we meet again, much love. Peace. Hello. I am going to the Americana again. <laughs> it's so pretty at Christmas time. I know I showed you a bunch last year, but I'm going to show you again when you round the corner. Look at that. Look at that. How cute is that with the chandeliers, like a five-story Christmas tree down there. I am meeting Amber, the friend who bought me this, my pinnacle, or actually she gave me hers. She didn't buy it for me. Uh, we're going to have some dinner and I'm going to see La La Land again for the second time because I'm obsessed. This is Amber. Favorite people. If You're she my had, favorite. if she had a YouTube channel, you would know why. Because <laughs> she's so funny. Look at this, people. Look at this. So gorgeous. It's so pretty. Oh my God, I can't take. It. Look, that's the big window outside to the big Christmas tree. I just want to show you guys this theater while I wait for Amber. Look at this awesome old Hollywood mural. It's so cool. And I have to say, seeing La La Land a second time when there's a whole bunch of other movies to see, totally worth it. Oh my God, everybody cried again. This, this. I'm having a hard time getting the camera to focus on this. It is an Athena coin. My, remember my mom was in, sorry, I can't even hold the dang thing. It's, it's, my, it's my left hand. <laughs> Um, my mom was in Greece for nine weeks and whenever she goes on a mission, she asks me, you know, what do you want me to bring back? It's always something little. And I said, anything with Athena on it. I mean, I didn't tell her that Athena is like my witchy goddess of magical magicalness. I was just like, you know, like, cause Athena's everywhere there. And that would be like a good representation of Greece. And then when she came back, she gave me a few little things, but no Athena. And I was like, eh. All right, well, she must not have wanted to get me something with a goddess on it because she's a Christian. For Christmas, she surprised me. And look, it's my favorite, favorite Christmas present. I love this. This is my new favorite piece of witchy jewelry. I'm already digging on this pinnacle that I got in November, I think. But this is rad. I can take Athena with me now everywhere I go. I have to show you this. It is one of my favorite Christmas presents that I got this year. I am a nut for leopard and look, it's a fancy hobo. That's the brand, it's not a hobo bag, but <laughs> it is a hobo bag. Um, it's a fancy clutch that is leopard and sparkly. And uh, I wanted to show it to you because I love it, but also because 
when my sister gave this to me for Christmas, I was like, oh my God, it's so me, because it is so me. I was, and she was saying, well, there were all different kinds of styles, but I just picked the one that I thought was the ugliest and that I wouldn't be caught dead carrying. <laughs> So it was like a passive aggressive Christmas present, but I don't even care. I love it. And little sisters, what are you gonna do? Happy New Year! Woo! Happy New Year! Can I see that? How big is it? Put it up to your head. Holy smokes! It's a Happy New Year, Maple Leaf. It's huge. We should turn it around because it's cooler on that side. Look at that. That's awesome. We are on our Happy New Year morning walk. It rained and rained and rained and rained and rained. And January 1st, it's sunny as could be. Sunny California. Oh, the neighborhood's in such a good mood. Every time we pass strangers, they say Happy New Year. And we woke up this morning to find out that some very clever pranksters got up on the Hollywood sign, which is kind of hard to do these days, <laughs> and changed the O's to E's. So everybody woke up uh, to the new year with a sign looming over the city that said Hollyweed, <laughs> which is appropriate because weed was legalized for recreational uses this year. Um, so maybe they were making that statement. <laughs> and we do have a dispensary here called Hollyweed, although I don't think they were behind it, but they, it probably didn't hurt their feelings too much that that happened this morning. And then I might as well show you this because it is January 1st and it will be coming down soon. Our little Christmas tree. It's um, not fancy. <laughs> These are all just ornaments that we've collected. Every year Tanner gets a new ornament from Hallmark, like a keepsake ornament, and then these are just random things that we've collected over the years. Where's this ornament this year? This, I tried to get a Mars ornament this year and literally nobody makes a Mars ornament. So I found this and he probably likes this just as well, if not better. Oh, Christmas tea. This I look forward to now every year after living here for a long time. It is the return of the camellias and they uh, they just come back in the winter time just before New Year every year so I always pick one for myself to celebrate the New Year. They're really pretty when they fall into the um, dead fallen leaves. They really stand out but they kind of look, they really easily fall apart but they're gorgeous. This is the special one. This is the special one for 2017. It's perfect. I love it. And then this I really wanted to show you. It is the Lunaria calendar for 2017. And besides all of the beautiful artwork, this is one of my favorites here. It is, it's got a lot of uh, poetry and lyrics sprinkled throughout, really beautiful stuff. But the reason for getting this is it's not an ordinary calendar. So the first page is not January, it is the first moon cycle of the year. So it begins on December 28th. And then each day has like detailed astrological information. And then the back, it has a lot of cool astrological information and some charts. I really was on the fence about getting this last year and then I didn't and I regretted it. So I was sure to order it this year early and I'm very happy I did. I can see this becoming like a tradition for me. I love this calendar. So it is dark right now and that is because I have been procrastinating. I've got myself a studio. It actually, let's see, it all started with this. A microphone that does not plug into my computer, but it's awesome. It's in this little case right here. It's so dark you guys probably can't see that. Um, so then I needed an interface. So I have an interface. I have a cord <laughs> and I have a mic stand and some headphones. I say I've been procrastinating because I'm supposed to shoot the first podcast or record the first podcast of the year tomorrow morning and I'm just now trying to figure all this out and I've been procrastinating because I'm really not 
a technically, sorry, that's my bean bag I'm sitting on right now squeaking. <laughs> my shoes are squeaking against it. Um, I'm not a technically inclined witch. Is that the right way to say it? I suck at technology. I'm very, I'm actually not bad at it once I jump in, but it takes me a long time to jump in. I get very intimidated and then, uh, yeah. Okay, I got cut off. My battery died last night, but it's the next day and look at me. I have a new studio. Yay! And sorry for those of you who don't love Hillary Clinton, but I do. <laughs> so she's watching over my studio. Uh, look, I have a nice fancy interface. I have some nice headphones, this lovely microphone. And um, it's right under this sort of, I love Joan from Mad Men. And there I have, this is a vision board I started working with last year, but I'm not done with it. I'm still getting a lot of inspiration from it. I love to stand here and stare at it and uh, contemplate how much of this has already come to pass, how much of it I am currently creating and how much of it I still need to work on. So I'm loving that. I love her, Hillary's spirit of when you get knocked down, you get back up. I get a lot of energy from that. And um, so I, <laughs> I just laugh because I know so many of you like don't love her. Um, and that's an understatement, but I do, I do, I do. This is exciting. I'm about to record my first show. 2017, the year of Her Excellency. Excellence. It has to start with excellent sound quality for the podcast. 